Hello, I'm Martin Woolley from the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, the standards organisation behind Bluetooth technology. So I've been invited to give you a 10 minute overview of Bluetooth capabilities and Zephyr. And I think the first thing to note is that Bluetooth is no longer a, a single thing. There are two distinct Bluetooth radio communications technologies. The first is called Bluetooth BR EDR, and that's the original Bluetooth from 21 or so years ago. And then there's Bluetooth Low Energy, which is newer. Uh, Bluetooth BREDR allows you to create point-to-point -point connections between devices for the purposes of exchanging data. Uh, it's a cable replacement technology, really. Bluetooth Low Energy, though, is much more versatile and more power efficient. Yes, you can have those point-to-point -point connections, but you can also broadcast data, which means any number of devices that are in range can receive data that you're broadcasting. And you can create mesh networks using Bluetooth Mesh, a distinct technology in its own right. And Bluetooth Mesh lets you create networks of up to 32,767 devices. And it's designed for things like smart buildings where things like automation and monitoring and control of building systems is really important. But that's not all it's for. Now the stack itself isn't one thing either. It's quite modular and many of the features are now optional. There's always a controller part and a host, so architecturally those are the two main building blocks and they talk to each other via a standard interface. The stack configuration you're seeing on screen is that which you'd probably find on smartphones and all sorts of other peripheral devices. This is for non-mesh networking. Mesh looks completely different though. It uses the same Bluetooth low energy controller at the bottom but the host has a whole new set of layers specifically for mesh networking. Let's have a look at Zephyr then and find out what support for Bluetooth we have. Well, BREDR uh, is incomplete and its status is deemed experimental. Probably not a lot of demand for Bluetooth BREDR on Zephyr at this stage, I would say. The story is completely different for Bluetooth Low Energy, though, including for Bluetooth Mesh. Bluetooth SIG qualifications exist at specific versions for host and controller for various purposes. And if you're unaware, Qualifications are the formal certifications that products must have in their use of Bluetooth. So if you're developing commercial products with Bluetooth, then you must have a look at this. That modularity um, extends to the Zephyr SDK as well. So project properties allow you to select the features that you're going to be using. And obviously this helps keep your code nice and lean. So here on screen, I'm showing you the properties that I've set up for uh, a Bluetooth mesh using device. So I've enabled Bluetooth uh, under the hood. The controller is using connectionless communication uh, or the observer and broadcaster roles as they're known. Um, I've enabled Bluetooth mesh itself and I've indicated that two special uh, roles that nodes can play, that of the relay and the proxy, are not required here. Pretty straightforward, but configuration actually does quite a lot of work for you. Here's an example of a gap peripheral, where again I've enabled Bluetooth, I've enabled SMP, that's a security manager protocol, because I'm using pairing, I've said it's a peripheral, and amongst other things I've enabled elliptic curve cryptography support, because I want to use the best security, which is provided by LE Secure connections. And here's a device that acts as a gap central. So all it does is scan and connect to other devices. Uh, and there wasn't much I needed to do in the configuration. Let's have a look at some code. Um, not an extensive review because I'm very short of time, but I want to give you just, just a flavour of what code looks like when using Bluetooth on Zephyr. So this is for, for peripheral devices which typically need to start out by advertising. So I'm creating the, um, the content and structure of the advertising packets largely using macros. A lot of great macros for use with Bluetooth on Zephyr. Uh, and then I'm making a single function call to start the advertising process. Defining GAT services and characteristics is something you'll very commonly need to do. You can see I've defined a UUID there. I'm not showing all my code here. Um, did that using a macro once again. Then I'm defining my service in terms of the service and its UUID and the characteristics that it contains. And there I've specified the UUID for each of the characteristics, um, what capabilities they have in terms of operations supported, and I've provided references to functions for handling 
operations on those characteristics and have specified permissions all in one go, largely taking advantage of macros once again. Then I create the GAT service itself. There's a type there, BT GAT service, and then I register it. So in a few lines of code, I can quite quickly define a Bluetooth GAT service and its characteristics and handler functions. Security also is very straightforward to use. You need to know what you want, of course. Bluetooth Low Energy leaves it up to you to decide what your security requirements are and gives you basically a toolbox. Here what I'm doing is uh, establishing the use of LE Secure connections for pairing uh, with passkey authentication, which gives me man in the middle uh, protection. So I have a structure there that defines some callback functions, which I then register. That's for use during uh, the kind of execution of the pairing process. And I then select the type of security you want on a per connection basis. And the constant there, BT Security FIPS, gives me level 4 security. That uses LE Secure Connections. FIPS stands for Federal Information Processing Standards, in case you were wondering. And that standard requires you to use LE Secure Connections. I guess that's where the name came from. When developing the code for mesh devices, you tend to be concerned with three things uh, in particular from a Bluetooth perspective. Uh, mesh devices or nodes as they're known have a structure. They have a number of addressable parts called elements and each element implements a number of standardized kind of behavioral capabilities that are called models. So your code will declare those uh, that structure and provide references to functions that will handle message types that are associated with those models. So code probably looks something like this. Again, extensive use of macros there to define an array of the model supported. And then in this case, I have a single uh, element or addressable part for my node. And then you bring everything together with BT Mesh Comp, which is the, the whole node composition. Sending and receiving messages is very straightforward. I haven't shown it here, but you've got network buffer APIs for formulating and kind of extracting data from messages that you receive. So here's a video of a demo I created using Zephyr with 16 separate nodes, each of which is a Nordic thingy. It so happens has an NRF52 module inside it. Um, so it's running Zephyr. I've implemented a couple of model, models that let me turn LEDs on and off and change their color. I've got an Android application using um, one of the nodes as a proxy to talk to the network. We use a publish and subscribe approach to addressing. Um, the different nodes have subscribed to different addresses so I can control subsets of them. So there I've sent a message that turns on all of the LEDs in the grid and then another one to turn them all off. Now I'm sending different message types to change the color, again all to uh, the same address for all of the nodes in my grid. And now I've changed the destination address so that only some of the nodes are responding. So at the Bluetooth Special Interest Group we have quite a nice collection of educational resources for developers and a lot of them feature Zephyr. They all cover some aspect of the theory of a given topic and they also have hands-on work in the form of course projects. So the ones I've picked on screen here are the main ones. The one on the left, the introduction to Bluetooth Low Energy Development is really for non-mesh uh, Bluetooth devices and covers all sorts of aspects of that. It's really cool, good fun to, to work with as well actually. The mesh networking one is of course for embedded software engineers who want to develop Bluetooth mesh devices and the Bluetooth Mesh proxy function is also associated with Mesh, but it looks at how you can create applications for smartphones and for web applications that can interact with a Bluetooth Mesh network using something called the proxy function. And then over on the right, we've got the Bluetooth LE Security Study Guide, which will tell you everything about Bluetooth LE Security, its, you know, its features, what those features are for and how they work, but also illustrates what's involved in using them in code using Zephyr once again. So I hope that's been a useful overview. Um, please take a visit to bluetooth.com and have a look at those study guides if you want to know more. I think there's time now for a few questions. Thank you.